One of the more interesting parts of Minecraft is the wide variety of mobs to be found. There are the fan favorites, such as the Creeper and the Enderman, as well as peaceful villagers and their evil counterparts of the Illagers. However, there's one that sticks out as extremely unique, and that's the Phantom. Although it certainly had its share of controversy amongst the community, it's impossible to deny that there's something strange about it compared to everything else. Why does it only attack players who haven't slept? Is it even real, or is it some dark hallucination? Welcome to Deep Dive, a series where I explore some of the more interesting and unique aspects of games such as Minecraft. Tonight, we're going to stay up late to examine the Phantom. Hopefully, our explorations will allow us to see how it fits into the overall context of the Minecraft world. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. To begin our investigation, we're going to start with their most unique aspect, which is their spawning condition. Unlike every other mob in the game, the phantom appears to be deeply tied to the player itself. Several things are required in order for phantoms to spawn. First, it must be night or a thunderstorm. Second, the player must be above sea level. And third, there needs to be an unrestricted view of the sky. The fourth condition, however, is the most interesting of them all. It must have been at least three Minecraft days since the player has slept. If these conditions are met, then groups of phantoms will spawn overhead, encircling and dive bombing the player. The final condition forces us to rethink some basic Minecraft mechanics. When talking about Minecraft lore, we often need to make a distinction as to whether something was designed to be lore, a gameplay element, or a technical limitation. A simple example of this is the Void. Although it may be tempting to try and craft some complex theory about what the Void is, the reality is that it's probably a technical concern. All video games have something like it beneath the geometry. It's not even supposed to be seen because of the bedrock layer, so I think it's tough to argue that we can use it when trying to figure out the lore. Another example is the infinite water source. Does the fact that two buckets can magically produce an unlimited amount of water imply some deeply complex interaction between the two? Does having two buckets tap into some interdimensional cosmic water source, allowing for infinite water at the expense of having an eternally dry nether? No, of course not. It's a gameplay decision, designed to make things easier on the player, especially if they're trying to build using water or craft potions. Now let's talk about sleeping. Initially, we may think of this as a gameplay factor. Sleeping serves the very practical use of setting the spawn point, with the added benefit of skipping the night. At first glance, there's really no reason to assume any lore implications. It's convenient from a gameplay standpoint to have a sleeping mechanic. Case closed, right? But that's what makes the Phantom so interesting. It takes something that seems to be purely designed for gameplay and suddenly turns that on its head, forcing us to fundamentally reconsider our assumptions. There is some purpose to sleeping besides just the practical element. A player that refuses to sleep is suddenly assaulted by screaming beasts from above. Sleep has been morphed into something that we need to consider from a lore perspective. So perhaps the best way forward is to take a brief detour into dreamland and really think about sleeping analytically. Players are not the only being that sleeps. Villagers do as well. In fact, every village house has a bed, it's part of the definition of a house. Villagers do not stay up late if they can help it, preferring to stick to a schedule, which, of course, includes sleeping. Beds can also spawn in igloos, but as I talked about in a different video, there appears to be strong evidence that a villager used this igloo, so that doesn't give us any new information. There's another place where beds can spawn, woodland mansions. However, these are different. Illagers don't use the crafted bed block. Instead, they prefer to construct their beds physically, sometimes creating ornate bedrooms. We don't ever actually see them sleep, but it's hard to imagine that they wouldn't use them. Furthermore, we know that illagers are physiologically similar to villagers, so it's no surprise that they would sleep as well. That's it though. We have three mobs that can sleep. Villagers, illagers, and the player. Out of Minecraft's 70 plus mobs, that number seems somewhat low. And to make things more interesting, the phantom attacks exactly one of them, the player. We can force villagers to do a rush and sleep experiment, but phantoms will not come after them. There's something special about the player. That statement seems to be an inherent truth to Minecraft, one which I've sort of avoided because it's a very complex topic. But it's not hard to see that the player is fundamentally different from the rest of the mobs in Minecraft. They can build and craft whatever they want. They can discover new things, rule over villagers, and farm mobs. I've talked about this before, but it's hard to deny that they have a place in the lore. The fact that there's an end to the game tells us that the player's actions matter. They affect the story. They can free the end. 
We can't just ignore them, and the fact that the Phantom is so deeply tied to the player forces us to recognize this. Simply knowing that the player is different is still not quite enough, however. The list of their unique features is long. Which one of these makes them a target for Phantoms? At this point in the discussion, we still don't know. So let's shift our focus back to the Phantom itself. It may be tempting to think that the Phantom is some hallucination from sleep deprivation. That does seem to make sense, as this can occasionally occur in real life. But it's clearly false. Hallucinations can't kill someone by attacking them. Furthermore, the Phantoms drop Phantom membranes on death, a physical item which wouldn't exist if the Phantom wasn't real. There is tangible proof that a Phantom is a physical mob, not some bizarre figment of the imagination. We can find some additional evidence from an unlikely source, cats. They're one of the tameable mobs. Cats hate phantoms, hissing at any that come near the player. Cats also have an interesting mechanic where they will sometimes bring an item to the player once they wake up. It's mostly the stuff you'd expect, such as string, feathers, or parts of a dead rabbit. But what's intriguing is that cats can occasionally find phantom membranes. Although this seems inconsequential, it alerts us to a subtle point that may otherwise be missed. Phantoms exist somewhere in the world even if the player never stays up. This allows us to rule out the idea that the player's lack of sleep somehow creates phantoms. Rather, phantoms are attracted to a player. Cats are apparently able to find them sometimes. Let's take a step back and review the evidence. We know that sleeping is important. By not sleeping, phantoms are attracted. We know that phantoms are real, physical beings that exist regardless of whether they attack the player. Now that we know phantoms are real, let's take a look at them a little more closely. Phantoms are a terrifying beast. They're the only overworld hostile mob that can fly, and their airspeed is second to just the Ender Dragon. Phantoms also have a very important property, they're undead. This puts them in a rather large group, including zombies, skeletons, zombified piglins, and many more. I've talked about this before, but one important implication is that an undead mob was, at one point, living. For some undead mobs, this is easy to see. For example, a zombie villager was clearly a villager, and a zoglin was a hoglin. There are many undead mobs whose original beings no longer exist in the world. This group all has the same basic anatomy, humanoid and similar to the player. These are an extinct species of builders, a group which I've mentioned a few times before. There's evidence for their existence throughout the world, but none of them survived, becoming undead instead. We'll return to these builders in a bit. For now, we can recognize that many of the undead mobs can all be lumped into a single category. Now, the phantom stands on its own among the undead mobs, there's nothing even remotely close to it that's alive, nor are there any other undead mobs similar in the slightest way. Nonetheless, we know that there was a living version of the Phantom at one point in time. So where is it, and what happened? This is one of the tougher mysteries we've covered on this channel. To think about it, it may be easier to eliminate some possibilities. The main use for the Phantom membrane is to repair the Elytra. Does this mean that the Elytra comes from the Phantom? I don't think so, for a couple of reasons. First of all, phantoms don't spawn in the end, and elytra are found exclusively in the end. Second, the elytra appears to be beetle wings. In fact, the word elytra refers to the hardened wing protectors in real-life beetles. Phantoms are simply not beetles. We can see a clear spine and skeletal system, contrary to the exoskeleton found in insects. Phantom membranes are a material that happens to repair the elytra, not something that came from the same place. It's a convenient substitution. At this point, it really does seem that phantoms are not related to anything else in the Minecraft universe. This is a very tricky subject. Now that we've examined the evidence, we're forced to make a bit of a jump here. I'll give you a fair warning. Usually in these deep dives, I'm pretty sure that my explanation is correct. But in this case, I'm less confident, so please respond in the comments with your thoughts about what I'm about to say. With that out of the way, let's see if we can find an explanation for the phantoms. As I said earlier, the vast majority of undead mobs belong to the ancient builder species, wiped out by a mass extinction event. These zombies, skeletons, and their variants attack the player in the modern day, but presumably they wouldn't have done so before they were made undead. We know that zombification can change or even reverse how entities act. A zombie villager becomes deranged and aggressive compared to their mild-mannered counterpart. And there's also evidence that the ancient builders worked alongside the Endermen, so it wouldn't seem as though they were inherently hostile when they were alive. What if the Phantom is the same way? Is it possible that in its living state it wasn't evil? The Phantoms have an uncanny ability to seek out players with a lack of sleep. That in and of itself is not a bad capability. In fact, if used correctly, Phantoms could be incredibly beneficial. I'm going to suggest that the ancient builders had a close relationship with the living Phantoms. There are tangible reasons why they would want to do so. We know that the ancient builders were explorers, using their ships to chart the world. 
Surely, sometimes they would get stuck, trapped, or otherwise incapacitated during their dangerous journeys. Rescue would be impossible, unless there was some way that they could be found. And it just so happened that there was a mob capable of this. A bird with a sharply attuned sense which could seek out entities that were weak with a lack of sleep. Perhaps their natural instinct was to hunt them, perhaps it was something else. Either way, the builders realized that the phantoms had this ability, which, if harnessed, could be very useful. So they got to work, training and taming the phantoms to be used for these search and rescue missions. Although it would be a tough task, having phantoms would be enormously helpful in reducing loss of life in their explorations. Phantoms were not easily domesticated, and they probably had a tenuous relationship with the builders compared to cats or wolves, which were deep companions. But that was okay, since phantoms were tools, not pets. They did their job, which was all the builders wanted. Then disaster struck. The mass extinction event began, and the zombie plague began to cripple their civilization. Cats and wolves happened to be naturally resistant, as were other domesticated animals such as cows and pigs. And not everything was so lucky. Some horses were afflicted. And phantoms were not immune either. Those nearby converted to the undead form, which are the phantoms we see today. As more builders began to fall, survival became tougher and tougher. This meant even more late nights on the run, hoping to escape the rapidly spreading disease. The phantoms were trained to come and find stranded builders, and they did just that. The problem was that they were infected, hunting down even the most resilient of the group. In a dark twist, the beings designed for rescue became the final dagger in their fate. This helps explain why cats hate phantoms. They seem to have an innate sense of when something is wrong, and after spending so much time with the living phantoms, they instinctively saw the problem with their undead variants. Although cats didn't have a deep understanding of what happened, they at least knew that something unnatural was going on, hissing at any phantoms that came nearby. As phantoms are birds, it's not unlikely that some of them were attacked by cats, leading to their avoidance of them. Skip ahead to the present day. The player is very similar to the ancient builders, both in capabilities and in appearance. They may even be of the same species, but that's a can of worms I'll save for a different video. Regardless, they're alike enough that phantoms instinctively attack them after lack of sleep. The difference is that the player is not vulnerable to zombification. So although they're annoying, at the end of the day, they're not that much different than zombies and skeletons. They're continuing to use their special capabilities even after becoming undead. As I said earlier, this is speculation. In every video, I remind you not to take what I say as the absolute truth. Think about the facts and come up with your own ideas. This topic is especially complex, and although my explanation may be correct, I could also be totally off base. For one, I still haven't explained how or why the Phantom is capable of finding players with a lack of sleep. I'm also assuming Phantoms would do the same to the Ancient Builders, something we can't know for sure. Another thing that's not explained is where the Phantoms go during the daytime. The spawning conditions tell us it has to be somewhere in the overworld. However, we could ask the same question about zombies and skeletons, so that issue isn't limited to just phantoms. The facts we've found leave some room for interpretation. I can't sit here and tell you I figured it all out. With this topic, I'm especially interested in hearing your thoughts. The phantom is often overlooked in lore discussions. The point of this video is to get the Minecraft community as a whole thinking about phantoms. If you want a place to get your ideas out there, come and join us on the Retro Gaming Now Discord. We have a great community centered around Minecraft lore discussions, and we'd love to hear your ideas. I want to get to the bottom of Phantoms, and this video is just a start. Also, this channel recently surpassed 100,000 subscribers. This is a pretty big achievement, but it's not about me, it's about you, the audience. So I wanted to do something special to commemorate this milestone. I always talk about how the purpose of this channel is to get people thinking critically about Minecraft theories. What I'm going to do is make a video in the deep dive style covering several theories from fans of this channel. It could be about something I've already talked about, or it could be totally unique. The important part is that you make it your own. In the description, there's a link to a Google form. Write out your theory in detail. You can also put it in the comments if you want others to see it. After a week or so, I'll read through them and pick the best ones and make it into a video. This is going to be a ton of fun, and I encourage you to submit your ideas, no matter how crazy. Once again, thank you so much for 100k. We'll go ahead and end with that. Thanks for watching. This has been Retro Gaming Now, and I'll see you all in the next video.